All right, welcome back, folks. We're now going to see the down up demo. Again, this is trying to learn recursion. So let's get into that. So the down up demo is pretty cool. And I don't need, I don't need any, uh, I don't need any screen for this. I make that really small. I don't need this. I want to write a block. I want to write a reporter block. The goal of the reporter block is to take a word and then successively chop the right side of the word away. So if I gave it balloon, as you see here, here's an example of, it's called down up. I'm going to write down up, OK? Down up on balloon should report balloon, and then take the N out and by baloo, and then the O off and say balu, balo, and then take the O and make ball, and then B-A-L, and then B-A, and then B, and that's the down part. Then go back up. Then you add it again, B-A. B-A-L, B-A-L-L, B-L-O, B-L-L-O, B-L-O-N, OK? And make a sentence of that. So let's try it. This works already. Let's try it. I can go here and just click it. And there it is. You see that this actually does exactly what we want. Balloon, 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 balloon. OK, it goes all the way down. To, to, down to B, and then goes back up. Now you're saying, Dan, I can do this, because I have a for loop, and I can for loop and just cut it off and keep adding to the answer and join it with the answer, and that's true. So there's nothing that you couldn't do. This is doable without recursion. In fact, it's important to know that anything is doable without recursion. Recursion doesn't give you any more power. It gives you more elegance. Okay? Recursion gives you no, there's nothing, you, oh, you need recursion for that. You can do anything recursively, non-recursively. That's a really big idea. Circle that somewhere in your notes. That's important. But here's a key. Recursion can often be smaller and tighter and easier to write. So recursion has that feature that People often turn to it because it's like an easier way to do something, rather than the really complicated hard way. For example, just for fun, try writing v without recursion. Okay, v calls v calls v. Pretend v can't call v. How does that even? How do you even do the v demo with that? You can do it, but it's really more complicated. Okay. All right. So we're going to write down up together. Okay, we're going to call it my down up. So down up works. That's the answer. We're going to work on together. Okay. So my we're, gonna, we're coding together, folks. My down up of word. And the goal is to return a sentence. Okay. So first question I ask you is, we're, we're coding together, what is down up of a single word? If I give it a single word like I, what is down up of I? Group? I. So we know that there's a possible case. I go to my control block, and I say, there's going to be probably an if-then situation. Okay. If I don't have to do any work, when do, I not, when do I have to do any work? When do I have a single letter? How can I test that? Can you give me, give me a way to test that? Exactly, when the length equals 1. OK, good. If the length equals 1. So length of word, I like this so far. You guys did a good, good job on that. Length of word equals 1. Then I just report the word, nothing special. Beautiful. And I can even try this. Let's apply this, and let's go and try this here. My down up here of I. Let's try it. Okay, and they should they should give me the hey, it works. Okay, so so far so good. Now comes the magic. Now's the mat. That was called the base case, by the way. That's when it's the smallest possible case. Now we have the recursive case, which means now I have a larger guy. But let's see if we can solve it really simply. Let's see if I have the word in. Okay, if I have the word in, okay. What should I put out? In, I, in. OK, so I'm going to need some joins in here, OK? I need a join. And the nice thing about join is it's variadic. I can have multiple inputs. So I'm going to report. Let's do this. Duplicate. I'm going to report. I know at the very least I'm reporting join of word, right? That's the in. The last one is word. Right? It's in something and then word. OK, so far so good? So now we ask you, what's in the middle? Let's just put I. Let's put lowercase i. Let's apply to see if it works. OK, let's try it. My down up. Oh, no spaces there. I got to put some in. Maybe I should join words. Does a join words, did I have loaded that one? Join words. Join the join words very out of Yes. The join words will put a space there. So I'm, I'm, I actually want to use join words rather than join because that'll actually put a space between it. So that's a good, remember, remember that for yourself, 
that join words are different from join for that reason. So let's throw the join away. Let's give it a shot. Come on, work, and I ask a tester with in. It should be in, I, in. Ready? I have to apply. Thank you. Good call. You guys are good. OK, again, you need to apply. That was all pedagogically intended so that you all knew <coughs> that you need to <coughs> apply. OK, good. In, I, in, it works. OK, we're done. And uh, no, no. Why isn't it, why isn't it, why isn't it done? I was, I was happy. I was not, not, not happy. Not, not so much? Is that always going to be a two-letter word with I be the first letter, right? Well, I'll test it again. Look, you say it doesn't work. OK, well, how about it? See, I tested on it. It worked for it. It must work. I tested it. It must work. What are one of the, what are the, one of the important learn, lessons we learned about testing? I tested, let's say I tested with 100 different words. They all happen to be two-letter words starting with I, but I, 100 different words. How about 26 words? Anyway, the point is 100 <laughs> different words out there. Does that, do I prove that, the, that my algorithm's correct or my code is correct? Never. All I did was give you good confidence, but you can never prove unless you do formal mathematical proof that it actually works, OK? Testing will never prove something. So I'm stuck. I don't know what to put in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. But I do know that I need some help. I need a helper. If this were a really long word, like, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, I know I have the outer part correct, right? The first part is A, B, C, D, E, F. That works. The last one is A, B, C, D, E, F. But the middle, what should the middle be? A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, A, B, A, right? And then back up. A, B, A, B, C, E, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E. Do I know of anybody? Do I know of anybody who can help me? Can I go higher? Is there somewhere in the left a block that somebody has written that'll do that for me? Well, who, this, is, this is the whole breakthrough. This is the breakthrough, right? This is the idea where you start to trust yourself. I'm trying to write a code that if I were handed ABCDE, would do it correctly. But now I've been given ABCDEF. And I'm saying, look, I got the cover, I got the F part and the F part here, ABCDF, ABCDF. But if I, I wish I knew somebody who could help me with ABCDE in the middle. Who is that? Me. I'm writing the guy that could do ABCDE to ABCDE, right? So if it's me, who is my helper? Do I go to the blocks? Yeah, I go to the blocks, but who do I get? Me. Me. This is me dragging my own block into the definition of itself. OK? This is why your brain is hurting right now. How is that possible that to define somehow it's like chicken and the egg? Like, how did it get? If I, how did it get started? But how am I defining me if I'm writing me in? Like, how does that even? Because when you click apply, it immediately shows up on the left. That's why. OK. So watch this. Now watch. Ready? My down up, watch me, goes where? In the middle. But does it go with word? No. I need to cut the end off. So how do I cut the end off? All but last letter. Now word is smaller by a little bit. Word started A, B, C, D, E, F. Now word is A, B, C, D, E. We can just test that. All but last letter of A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. What does that return? A, B, C, D, E. So we're good on that. Now the word is smaller by a little bit. And I'm calling myself on the smaller version. Is that totally? Like a brain buster? Now watch it. I'm going to drag this now into this. The code now looks like this. Okay. If it's one, I stop. And I just report the words. So it's I or A or N, just returns it. If not, what I do is I first chop the, a let, the last letter off. So it came in A, B, C, D, E, F. Now it's A, B, C, D, E. I then call myself. And what's that going to do? I'm trusting that it just works. So I trust that that's going to return a sentence, which is A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, A, B, A. 
A, B, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. That's what the middle is going to give me, because I trusted that I work. And I stuff that in the middle, and I have to put in the A, B, C, D, F to make it work for A, B, C, D, F case. I'm going to hit apply and be blown away when this works. My down up, A, B, C, D, E, F, ladies and gentlemen, I want to applaud that this actually works. And ladies and gentlemen, A, B, C, D, E, F, my down up. How oh, goes in love? All right. So, audience, that was an example of writing a recursive routine. I tried to go through the, all the process. We started with the base case. We ended up with the recursive case. In the recursive case, what you noticed is I made the problem smaller by a little bit somehow. I called myself on that smaller project, and then I somehow combined it together to have the return value for the recursive case. That's how you write recursive routines. That's a common pattern you're going to see. All right? That was down up, and we'll see you next time.